turn to Matt, Matt Doyle, Birmingham City, March the 13th, Hello. Friday the 13th. <laughs> There's no, no coincidence, I guess. Um, how have things been for you since that date? Yeah, it's, it's been interesting. I think, you know, obviously the lads have all said quite a lot. They're really good stuff. Um, I think the, the key one is the early days of it. We, we didn't know what was coming. So I don't think as a club we're quite full on anyway, but I'd echo what Joe said. We, we was cautious that you don't go full on um, because, listen, I was anxious. I was scared about what was going on. You know, I'm, I'm sure a 12-year-old would be. So um, it was the unknown. So we, we tried to keep it as simple as possible. We did try and keep it as... Um, structured as we could and in the same way so act as normal if you like so I'll quickly share uh, what we've done um, and listen if anyone's watching uh, please you know question anything if you want to ask me why what um, uh, like what, were the, what was the rationale behind something then please do um, I think the the issue obviously but I suppose it's the beauty of what we do is that the spectrum is so wide so I suppose that the initial conversations we had were you know, what, what can we get an under nine uh, doing that's going to be, uh, I suppose, uh, in, interesting to an under 23 and, and vice versa. So, and listen, we can talk all day about this because I'm, I'm really big on the individual. You know, we don't know what sort of living arrangements they have, the garden, et cetera, if they've got a brother. So I suppose one, we were trying to keep it um, normal because there's a lot going on and you want to just keep it normal, but also we were trying to be as creative as we can. And it was a good challenge. Um, so as you can see, the screen is is a bit lively, but we try to make it as kid friendly or, or easy on the eye as we can. Um, so I'll quickly go through. So we we worked for about four weeks. Um, so when when it all sort of started to materialise the, the COVID days, um, we were just entering our uh, defending block. So what we do at the club is when the outfielders are on their defending three week cycle, um, we're working on as you can see they're defending the space and the area. So obviously it's um, it's in line, which is quite good, which I know we'll come on to later. So I won't talk too much about that. Um, so it, it fit in, it fitted in quite quite nicely. I think we were cautious that, and again the club do it really well. The outfield coaches knew what the goalkeepers were doing and vice versa. Um, so there was a real holistic approach to it, um, and you know it wasn't just us touching base with the goalkeepers. It was the outfield coaches uh, doing it as well, and, and the goalies doing it that way as well. So they were all involved in all of the outfield stuff. So whether that's their own technical challenges that they were doing, their topics, um, whether it was the Strava, the sports science stuff, it was definitely a, a joined approach. So what I mean by keeping it uh, pretty simple and pretty normal, we normally have a week where we have two technical topics, as you can see in front of me. We normally try and link them together. So when it comes to planning your session, it's a little bit more effortless, if you like. Um, and then obviously we try and link it to the, the big bold red there, as you can see them sort of... Um, topics if you like so defending the space area we normally do sort of a crossing type stuff and then if we can't do sort of two lots of crossing we'd normally try and link it into something that would naturally flow from a, a crossing session which obviously distribution would be so and again we always have to revert back to what are they actually going to be able to do what are they what do they really want to do and can we keep it quite uh, kid friendly so I'll quickly breeze through the, the three weeks of this so that was the first week so coaching week 39 in our program we normally send out our best practice videos. So this was this is what I sent to the players, by the way. So I'm just sharing it with you guys. I took some slides out. Um, so there was a video shared uh, for the lads of this. And, and I'm a big believer that if you're going to ask them to do something, you've got to show them that you're willing to do it yourself. So we had a bit of fun with it. Uh, the first week was me. So I'd done, which we'll come on to in a minute, uh, some videos in my garden of these two topics and trying to be creative with it. Um, just showing that I'm not taking myself too seriously and we can have a, a bit of a laugh. Uh, this was the, the following week. Uh, so I passed it on to one of the other coaches. They then created the video, uh, which was good, and sent it out. Uh, so there were the topics. So, yeah, so we had three weeks' worth of two topics in each week, technical. Uh, and then what we did, uh, and then there was a video for each one. We normally have a tactical theme for this period. So in the yellow, that was our tactical theme. Again, we try and link it as much as we can to what the outfielders are doing, and, and they know what we're working on. So, you know, they're getting the, the realistic sort of uh, challenges in their sessions about, hey, you know, you should be staying connected here with the team, as you can see there. What what should you be saying there? So the vocabulary one was quite an interesting one because I'll come on to it. What we've done with this tactical theme, and it is something we might look to, to carry on. I really enjoyed it. We, uh, we used Huddle. Um, I'll come on to that, actually. So this is a quick uh, idea of what the, the, uh, the cells are working on, so the outfield. So we, we had a little look over this and how, how much can we really sort of prod them on this on the tactical side of it? Can we keep them engaged? And if anyone needs any of this after, I'll let you, um, I'll let you see. I'm not expecting you to read it all now. 
So in terms of the, the tactical task, uh, rather than do it week by week, as you saw with the technical bits, we've done this as just the three week period. So all I've done is I created some master footage. I went on uh, Wirescout, pretty straightforward, um, and downloaded, you know, I think there was about three hours worth of footage from loads of different leagues of goalkeepers dealing with sort of defending the space in the area. So lots of like counter attacking from, from teams, lots of like low block stuff. Um, just loads of opportunities, hopefully, for the lads to spot, uh, you know, goalkeepers. Are they staying connected? Um, what might you say there? I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with it. I'm sure you all are. If anyone's not, just give me a shout. Uh, I can explain it a bit further. But the lads were, you know, I'm quite big on them trying to upskill themselves as well. So they were, they were really creative on it. So they had to get stuff from the master footage, put it in their own playlist. You can annotate on it so you can put circles on it. You can have text on it. Um, and we split, we split all the goalies up. So we had, I think there was, it was about 22, 23, maybe a bit more. And we split them up between the three coaches and we all looked off. So we, sort of, we looked after them. Uh, we touched base with them. And we just logged on and, and if you talk about, you know, society these days and, and kids these days, they're, they're always on their phone, as we all know. So they're all, they're all very used to sitting there typing stuff on their iPads, on their phone. So we thought this was a, quite a, an easy way to really connect with them. And it was good. They, they were really clever with it. Um, and we just said, look, if you could do 10, 10 minutes a night, you might have a night where you don't do it. We're not, they're not robots. We're not saying get on here every night. We're not checking in every night. We might give them a little nudge. Because listen, I'd, I'd like it if they're out in the garden or, or down the park or in their driveway with, with, the, with their mum playing whatever. It could be just throwing a tennis ball. So we, we was quite laid back, as I said at the start. So this was really good, the, the huddle bit. Um, so the technical task, we gave them a little bit of an example. But we are, you know, really big on the player-led led stuff. But because of the, the, the period we were in, we just thought, right, let's give them a little bit and let's show them as well. So like I said, I'd done, I done the first few clips. So you can quickly scour over that. Um, we just give them an idea of what you might do for a deep cross and what you might do for a counter-attacking technique. So I will quickly show um, the videos. Um, I will apologise now. They are in my back garden. I did use my daughter's Peppa Pig toy to try and kick a ball out, so I haven't, hopefully I haven't offended any Peppa Pig fans that are on the call. Uh, no one was hurt in the, in the, in the, in the setup of these videos. Uh, so I'll just play these. I won't play them all, but just have a little watch. This is just to, again, make it kid-friendly, make it interesting, make it fun, see if they could do it themselves. And what I'll do is, like I said, I won't bore you to death. I'll skip to the next one quickly. So that was the sort of a run inside volley. So we just give them a little bit of a flavour of what you might do. Um, so this was the next one. That was a bit of fun for the lads, just to see if they had a giggle at that. So again, really conscious of what they've got at home. Um, hopefully they've all got some form of a wall, although I'm, uh, listen, you're not going to get a realistic cue and a trigger off of a wall, but this, it was unprecedented times. We was just trying to keep it, keep some form of a program going. So this is an example of the, the next challenge. I won't go through the video, but we gave them uh, wide crosses, uh, diving saves. So again, the crossing fitting in well to the tactical theme and, and the defending the area type stuff. Um, and then we just threw in a technical diving save one just because we felt like they could do it. And there's two videos there. So another coach done that, which was good. He had a bit of fun making them. And then the last week we done was close reaction saves. And, and again, linking into the theme, the punching stuff, which was, was quite interesting. So it's stuff that they, we thought they could do. Um, I can assure everyone that's watching, my, my garden's looking a lot better than that from my uh, lockdown garden. Don't worry about that. Uh, and then what we, what we tried to do, lastly, we thought, as I'm sure you all saw, the toilet roll challenges. And, and there was loads of stuff really creative going on. We, we put them at a challenge and we had them all in a WhatsApp group, obviously. So it was really good because you had like the under 10s chatting with the, you know, the under 18s and they were all sending their footage to each other and collating. If you talk about them upskilling themselves, they were all on their, on their, their computers, sort of clipping videos, putting music on it. So they put together a few videos. This one was like a goalkeeping type toilet roll challenge, which was, which was really good. Um, and we just asked them on the next week after that, 
Uh, so, so just to clarify, each week they had two technical challenges and this additional video. Uh, and then every week they got a new technical two and the, and, the, and the new video, the tactical one just run throughout. So this was like a synchronized one, which again was really good. And we just felt, and I'll come on to this later, we felt at week three, it was sort of dying down a bit, getting a bit monotonous and they were sort of losing it a little bit. So we, we just didn't put it on them. We, you know, let them be kids and, and give them the, the week off, if you like, with this. Um, and these were the videos of the, what the lads said. And again, really brilliant, really uh, creative. We did give them some daily challenges. We didn't check up on these. So again, it was just to give them an idea of something to do. You could say just to keep your eye on it, but listen, I don't think you're not, you're not going to sharpen the sword uh, and make your techniques better in this period for me. So again, it was more just a social and just to feel like they were doing something and at their own, um, at their own leisure really. And then uh, they were all still, lastly, they were all still doing their individual, we call them, um, well, their ILG, so individual learning guides. They've all got their own playlist on Huddle and they keep populating them of their footage. So they could go back through their game from previous weeks. Uh, with, in relation to their own challenges currently set uh, and just, just keep populating them really to not, not come off the gas really as much as they can. Um, and that was pretty much it. But yeah, if anyone's got any questions or wants to know why or what, uh, more than happy to, uh, to answer. Cheers, Matt. I think uh, probably the first question most people have for you is, uh, did you hit Pepper Pig? I did. Yeah, and it, and, I, and I, hit it, I hit it well. Um, it was good because all of the all of the lads uh, they they quite enjoyed that one because it was new and it was fresh. Some of them had gardens, some of them didn't, but they were all sending in videos of like a run inside volley, which is something we've talked about. So there's like a bit of a story behind that. But um, but yeah, I did, and 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 they took it was a bit of fun, you know. Made fun of myself a bit. I was doing it in my garden with a pepper pig. It was just to get a bit of a giggle, really, and then because there's loads going on in the world, so yeah, it was good, and I did I did hit him twice. So yeah, <laughs> happy days.